grace and peace. And um, I pray that God's at work in your life today, making you more and more like him, that God is blessing you to make you more and more like him, that other people see God at work in your life and that they want to be more like Christ and what Christ is doing in your life. And hope and pray that those moments are coming and that God always does what seems good to him, Second Samuel ten twelve. It's been quite a year, 2020. It's been a very, very emotional year with um, things that have been going on uh, globally, nationally, locally, in light of the pandemic, in light of um, death that's brought a lot of attention, um, in light of people's circumstances being changed. Uh, with the pandemic, uh, seeing people test positive, people that have died from it, um, thinking about how their families are in grief and emotional pain and and heartache and heart goes out to, to them in light of circumstantially. Um, there's people I know that have lost their jobs. Um, I've had a coworker lose his job and you just seriously just don't want to see that and thinking about how that affects them and their families and praying that God does what seems good to them in their lives and in light of what's happening in the world with uh, national deaths that have been brought to the forefront with George Floyd and police officers in this city or that city in Tulsa, the police officer that lost his life a few weeks ago. With all death comes solidarity. People coming together and grieving together and reacting differently. That's just very emotionally heavy. Just thinking about when people pass and the grief and heartache and bottoming out of hearts that comes with losing someone you love deeply. Um, that's just that's just hard seeing uh, them mourning and also your mourning and because it affects you too and it's just a very emotional year to, to to be honest and God has been very very good to us. God has been faithful. He's kept his promises and God is still making us more and more like Him. Something I love in the Bible is in the book of Psalms, you see these godly men, godly people expressing themselves with this emotion and they don't suppress their emotions. They don't congeal their emotions. They don't vent their emotions. They pray their emotions towards the Lord. You see loneliness, which is a different hurt all in in itself you see um anger bitterness jealousy uh envy um fear you see all of these emotions um the hunger for revenge that these men uh david asaf moses um some other ones the sons of korah all they all express these emotions towards the Lord and it teaches me it shows me and I've heard godlier men say this that um you're to pray your emotions praying is an expression of deep friendship with God deep covenant to love with God uh intimate development with God um God making himself realer and more closer to you and you being brought more and more into God's presence and more like the Lord. Psalm 16, 11, God, in your presence, there is the fullness of joy. Two people that have passed recently that I have been deeply affected by in my life have been uh, John Lewis, who was a congressman out of Georgia, who um, went through a lot of physical, circumstantial pain that I have rights that I have today as a black man, uh, deeply thankful for. Um, if you just do a piece of research on his life, you'll see um, the things he went through. So it's a great man. And uh, J.I. Packer, who was, was very famous in the world, but he wrote a book called Knowing God. 
And in the first chapter, I'll never forget this. This was was, was when God was radically transforming my life um, about 10, 11, 12 years ago. He wrote first in this in this book, for, in Knowing God, for some infallible reason, God wants me as his friend. Thinking about a friendship of God, he has these elements in the book. There's the fatherhood of God. There's the friendship of God. There's the closeness of God. Thinking about God as friend has been tremendously impactful in my life, thinking that God, the creator of the universe, who knows everything, who can see the real you, who can see the real me, wants to be our friend. Uh, Exodus thirty three eleven, God spoke with Moses as a man speaks with his friend. In James chapter 2, Abraham's righteousness Abraham's faith was credited credited to him as righteousness, and he has a friendship with God. And what I want to look at today is Psalm 25, especially in Psalm 14, 25, 14. It says, the friendship of God is for those who fear him, and he makes his covenant not known, to him, known to him. Excuse me. And I'll dive into that into a little bit, but I want to go through Psalm 25 with you today and it's one of those psalms where there's a lot of emotion there's a lot of angst and david just expresses it all to him everybody in life has these two different structures of 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 relationships of communion there is family which means it doesn't matter for the most part your personality or who you are, who you turn out to be or the characteristics you have. These people are always in your corner. You need somebody to stand up for you. You need somebody to fight for you. You need to stay the night with people. You need to, you need to borrow something. You need to borrow money. These people are always here dedicated to your life in the bond of family. They're obligated. They have to be there for the most part. And then the other side of that, you have a friendship. And friendship is special because I don't have to be here with you. I want to be here with you. There's no obligation to be here. We're friends. We don't have to be together, but we are together because we genuinely, authentically, really do like each other I'm not saying family can't like each other I love my sisters and brothers I like my sisters and brothers I think they're wonderful um, I'm not saying that but what I'm saying is there's a there's nothing legally binding there's nothing circumstantially binding that keeps me here except I want to be here I want to be your friend and in Psalm 25 we see that this is God's word Verse 1, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They will be put to shame who are wantonly treacherous. So David starts off by saying, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I, I give you myself. I give you who I am in light of what I'm going through. I have my trust in you. Um, Malcolm Gladwell is a is an author, and he has this book called, um, it's a book about uh, strangers. It's about um, relationship structures, how people uh, interact with each other. And it says, we are freakishly trusting people for the most part, for the most part. You know, we say we have trust issues, but he's saying, there are so many people in life that you trust that you have no idea you even trust them. And David is saying in Psalm 25, 2, it says that, Oh God, in you I trust. I hold fast to you. He's saying, let me not be put to shame. Let me not be embarrassed. Let not my enemies exult over me. God, I'm taking you to my bank and I'm relying on you, not in people. Like Psalm chapter 20, verse 6, some people trust in chariots and horses. David trusts in the Lord and his life reflects he trusts in the Lord. Nobody who waits for you will be put to shame, but they'll be put to shame or wantonly treacherous. In verse 4, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. 
Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you're the God of my salvation, for I wait for you all day long. He's saying, God, let me let me know what you love, let me know what you hate. Teach me what you're like, that I'm that I be more like you, that I fall more in line with who you are, God. Put me under your tutelage and teach me and counsel me and inform me. He's putting his trust in the Lord and his ways, not in the ways of man. Verse 6, remember your mercy, O Lord, your steadfast love, for they have been from a fold. So David has a deep sense of he's done things wrong. He's has sin, he has error, and he says, God, remember your mercy. Spare me from what I have come into me and what I deserve in my sin nature. He's saying, remember your love, your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. If you're like me, you may have trouble loving people steadfastly, which means um, no matter how much weight gets put on me, no matter how much weight, uh, I remain steadfast. I keep my strength. I keep it still. There's no breaking. There's no uh, bridge you burn, and there's no coming back. He's saying, remember your steadfast love, how strong and unbreakable your love is towards me. Remember those things, for they've been from of old. You've been this way since the beginning, O oh Lord. Before there was even such thing as the beginning, you've been this way. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. We we so tend to be this way. We remember things about people. We even put names on them. Um, we even address them uh, as such. Um, we bring up things from uh a long time ago and identify people with them but he's saying remember not the sins of my youth but according to your steadfast love remember me and your love remember me for the sake of your goodness O lord he's david is giving deep intimacy with his relationship towards god good and upright is the lord therefore he instructs sinners in the way he leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way Pride can keep you from experiencing a lot of blessings God has in store for you. Um, pride can block them. Pride can repel them. Pride can keep them uh, very away from you. But if you humble yourself, you um, bring yourself low before the Lord. That's where he teaches. Um, Jesus uses the example in, in the parable of the man who says, God have mercy on me for I'm a sinner. Instead of saying, God, I'm so glad I'm not like those people over there or like this person over here. Um, you bring yourself low to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness, verse 10. For those who keep his covenant and his testimonies, for your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt for it is great. One of the greatest blessings God can give us is when you have a deep, authentic sense and knowing of who you are before who God is. And we're all dirty, low down, filthy rag sinners. Um, I've heard it this way. The gospel is good news for the, for a terrified, for a terrified man before the Lord. He's saying, pardon my guilt, God, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him he will instruct him in the way he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. Great blessings come from those who fear the Lord, who have a joy, a life rearranging joy before the Lord, um, a constant knowledge of him that makes you afraid to break his will. Um, that has a deep, deep respect and admiration for God. You have a fear of the Lord. You take him at his word. You have a deep, intimate knowledge of who God is. Things in life, whether it's something you see or something you know, they always bring to mind who God is, how powerful and wonderful and loving the Lord is. Verse 14, the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes to them known his covenant. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes them known to them his covenant. You can just sit back and think for a few minutes what makes good friendships. Uh, one of them is uh, 
juicy secrets and by juicy i mean um very 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 strong secrets very deep things like you're the only other person who knows this about me or or i can trust you with anything um david in psalm 25 14 says that there's confidentiality there's a deep sense of friendship for the for those who fear him and god makes them known as covenant we speak to god in prayer we speak to god in in life and the lord speaks to us through his word through us having fear through him through us having humility through us um expressing god we need you um there's a deep deep sense of friendship from the lord for his people god is bearing god is being our close excuse me god is being our close friend and you just think about the closest friendships you have there's certain elements that person has something that, that you don't have or maybe it was through a tragedy you guys both went through that you guys became closer friends or whether you guys have something in common and you realize hey we're exactly alike or hey you're not like me but i really 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 like that or you guys been through uh school together um you go to church together or you work together there's just this reverberating back and forth deep intimate relationship you have with you have with people one of my favorite book series is uh lord of the rings um big Tolkien fanatic and i like um in the element of the third book that there is this uh journey uh two guys have to go through uh frodo and sam they're going through um a marsh and a labyrinth of rocks and they go to this volcano and this sounds crazy if you've never seen it i'm sorry but um they go try to fulfill and save the world by going on this quest and it brings them they were friends before but this quest brings them closer together to the point where their their relationship their friendship will never be the same again and god has that with us we go through these journeys adventures tumultuous times dark times times of joy god is there with you each through each and every one of these moments in life that develop this friendship towards the lord he gives you this deep secret knowledge about himself that impacts you deeply god deeply deeply loves you and god is the best friend we have Verse 15, my eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. There's some more manifestations of emotions. He's expressing to God, please be gracious to me. I am lonesome and I am hurting. And I know you hear me through what I'm saying. And I pray that you please help me through what I'm going through. That is friendship. That is love. That is deeply special the troubles of my heart are enlarged bring me out of my distresses i have he has much trouble internally and we've all been there to some degree we've had those moments that um bring a lot of heartache and pain and fear and worry and um to the point where life can seem unfair or you've been done wrongly or you just have no idea or you can't even explain for some reason you just you don't know why you just you just feel this way and my heart goes out to you i'm sorry Brent, consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins consider how many are my foes and with violent hatred they hate me oh guard my soul and deliver me let me not be put to shame for i take refuge in you May integrity and uprightness preserve me for our way for you. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all his troubles. So you see in Psalm 25, you see these emotions. You see this person also has a knowledge of the Lord, is very mindful of God. God has mercy. God has kindness. God has grace. God has been here from the beginning. Um, 
I can bring my pain and my trouble to the Lord. God has there's confidentiality with God. There's things in every Christian's life. There's things you've told the Lord. Nobody knows. But you've told them to God before. And God gives you a secret, deep knowledge of himself that keeps you coming to him. There's a deep sense of friendship. And God wants you as his friend. God wants us in prayer. Uh, Charles Spurgeon says it like this. A, a Christian is only as strong as his prayer life. And with prayer comes the friendship of intimate knowledge and uh, d- internal intimate development. Inter- in, excuse me internal sanctification making you more and more like him and face it you've changed a lot of times based off of the friends you've made I remember friends I had in high school how my personality was changing a bit and how I even articulated words changed a bit I had friends in college the same thing and friends I have now that I'm learning and I'm edified by. It's the same thing. And with the Lord, this friendship, you change how you talk. You change how you love other people based off of how he's shown himself to you through his word and through prayer. And my encouragement to you is um, take time out daily to tell God everything. And any emotions you have Let God know them. Of course he knows them already. Of course he does. But this has a lot to do with you as well and your relationship with him. The Bible says, cast your anxieties on the Lord for he cares for you. Um, My mother's favorite verse is uh, Psalm 73, 26. My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion. And there are many other verses in the Bible that address how our hearts are to be towards the Lord so if you have great people in your life you have great family thank the Lord for that if you have great people in your life that are your friends thank the Lord for them I'm deeply a lot of times I feel like the most blessed person alive based off of how people have shown love to me and be thankful towards the Lord's friendship with you on a personal level God knows you by name God knows every promise he has in store for you. And I hope and pray that God brings to mind more and more things and how much he deeply cares and how much he deeply knows and how much bad stuff God has seen in your life, but he's still, that does not change his steadfast love for you. So take encouragement in that today. Hope and pray you have a blessed Tuesday.